I would have thought this was impossible a year ago. I just climbed up the highest mountain in Poland in my shorts. It's freezing, full of snow, and the reason I could do it is because I learned the Wim Hof method. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I um, this is a new style of podcast on the channel. Um, it's going to be all about people's hobbies, interests, passions, and in some cases careers. So something that people are really passionate about. Um, I've recorded seven, um, which I'm going to release over the next 14 days. I'm trying to keep them to short, so 30 minutes long. If you have something that you're really passionate about, please get in touch with me. I put my contact details below. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, um, there's information below as well. I'm on Patreon. If you don't like reoccurring payments, you can support through PayPal or, you know, Bitcoins or whatever. Um, anyway, um, this is the first. It's with Neil Amuraku and Neil um, is talking to me all about Wim Hof um, breathing, cold exposure, um, and the impact that has had on his life and now loads of other people. So check it out and uh, um, yeah, subscribe to the channel and all that because that just helps get it out there. Thank you. I mean, you'd looked into the martial arts, you'd looked into yeah. a huge amount of things, but you were in the thick of raising kids, yeah. in the thick of uh, holding down a job and yeah. all that that entails. And... I mean, those years, the, uh, somebody told me the, the, time, the years of having kids are known as the tired years. <laughs> and I think that's a perfect way to kind of, to capture those. But you, you stumbled upon something to help you yeah. at that time. Yeah, you're right. They are the tired, tired years. We had, we had four children very quickly. Yeah, and you mad jokes. Yeah, yeah so we had four children under the age of four and they were the tired, exhausted. Four under four. Yeah. So we had the, we had the two boys and then the girls the twins arrived, and okay. um, yeah, it was it was it, lovely a, surprise. Yeah, lovely Sorry, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, a beautiful abnormality is what the doctor called identical twins. Right. Um, so, but you're right. It was a time of just being wrecked all the time and being under pressure. And as you said, trying to have a career or trying to figure out what that was about at the same time and and be a good dad and be a good father and and try and be a good person. All that that kind of came about and, and then you know I had been interested in all these things and had tried them and had taught them and you know had made an effort to make them something as a bigger part of my life mm -hmm. but it just really wasn't working um, and then I heard Wim Hof talking on a podcast late one night and you know it was like hearing somebody saying that we could use our breath in a very simple way and we could combine it with the cold and that could transform us. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, it, it was like a thunderbolt <laughs> hit me in the kitchen. Yeah, see, but you, so you went like from um, doing cold showers and doing the breathing and doing that course to, I mean, a few months later, you were up in the mountains, in the ice cap mountains in your shorts. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, we started, myself and Josie started late in the, in, in the winter time and it was just how things uh, uh, kind of fell into sequence that very quickly after doing the course online, I knew this was something I had to learn everything about. Mm -hmm. And the only way back then, it wasn't too much about Wim online, was I said, oh, you can become an instructor and, and that was it. But it happened very quickly because of the timing of it. I was in Holland then, um, you know, maybe in the May and then back in, in the winter time in Poland going up the mountain. So it was a very kind of short amount of time. Mm -hmm. It was a year in total, but from start to end, it was about a year. But this, every step of it helped me more and more. And every step of it helped Josie and myself and 
my mum and dad and other people in the family more and more. And I could see that this was something, just simple breathing and mm-hmm. getting in the cold was something that could help you know, whoever was struggling with something, which is a lot of people. I sat there now, just we look amazing. You have the full head of hair though, haven't you? I you do, just yeah. chosen to shave it. <laughs> yeah. why, uh, why on Christ <laughs> would you <laughs> fucking shave it? For you, you had no intention of that going anywhere when you went and did that course in the first place. Did no, it, w- it was really to understand breathing in the cold at its deepest level. Mm. For me. And for Josie to get us up out of this kind of dark hole that we were in. That was, the, that was really the motivation for mm. it. And I think sometimes when we go into something without the pressure of feeling, I want this to be a business or my yeah. job, it kind of allows us to grow, experience it differently. You're mm. just you're just enjoying it. Yeah. And even when, and that then that enjoyment part of it, that playful part of it. There's no pressure. Mm. And you know we react totally different to things when we're under pressure when we're not under pressure. Oh, when well, I play no robot, no robot, no more. Totally different to things when we're under pressure when we're not under pressure, and even it was interesting for me that as I went through the, the training to be a, an instructor, you know I loved it, and yeah, you know, the idea of teaching it to people to me was so appealing, but still I hadn't I didn't have like a five year plan a ten year plan, and when we became instructors, you know we, I was on the podcast here with you and it was just all happening then. But there was a, a couple of instructors within my group. They immediately gave up their day jobs. Mm. And one of them had f- four children like myself. And I remember thinking, mm. I, w- I wouldn't like that. Because then all of a sudden, I, I this thing that I love is being under, put under pressure to pay all the bills and feed all the children and pay mm. for the house. You know, so... It suddenly changes. It does like, change. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like having this beautiful plant in front of you and instead of just letting it grow by itself you're waiting for it to bear fruit immediately and, you're, mm. and your children are all waiting around for the fruit you know so they could eat and that wasn't the way for me maybe it works for some people but I just thought to myself okay I'll keep the other business going over here and it'll pay the bills and there was no pressure on this mm. and I think that was part of the reason that it, it flourished then there's loads of reasons, but that was one of the reasons that I wasn't put any, under any pressure. You see, what I love about... Um, I love the simplicity. I love the unpretentiousness of, of what you do and I love the fact that it's kind of um, uh, there's so many kind of gurus so many kind of things out there that suggest oh you know if you do X, Y and Z you can you can get to a place of perfect peace it, this is not really about anything like that from what I can understand it's more about em- it's a kind of an embrace of the discomfort of life and um and the cold, the ice cold, is one of those things that are an extreme. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's what, I, and I love that it's freely available. You know, it's, it's there and you just twist the shower knob. Yeah. And that's what the cold experience is, is, you know, mm. with it, when you're in your nice hot shower and let's enjoy the hot showers we've evolved over millions of years so we can press a button and hot water comes out and let's enjoy those but when we turn it to cold within that experience of the cold water hitting us is everything mm. there's the shock of it there's the chaos in the mind there's the fear oh my god get me out of here but there's also other things to it you know mm. there's also the idea that there's potential in there that that this can help us in some way and I remember at one stage, you know, a couple of years ago, I was in the cold shower, in the hot shower, you know, descri- you know, doing exactly what I described, turning it to cold, feeling all these like different emotions at the same time. And I had this kind of thought that, why do I, why am I, 
why do I hate this culture? What will you know, why am I being so um you know negative towards this cold shower? Because every time I turn it, this discomfort it improves my my health, it improves my 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 mood, it has benefits for everyone I live with, it does all these amazing things for me all the time, and all I give it is jip. You know? <laughs> so it's kind of and now it kind of changed my view of it that not that I didn't feel the same sense of dread going in or not that I didn't feel those first few moments of oh but my in my mind I was thinking to myself this is good for me mm. and it's always good for me and it always was good for me mm. and that kind of changed it for me then it was like as you said it was an it was an embrace Not that the experience of getting in the ice bath ever, you know, there's, there's always this little bit of you that doesn't want to get in. But knowing that it's always there to help me was a change. Yeah. It, well, I call it the gift that keeps on giving. Um, but it, 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 that fear that you're talking about and that battle is part, uh, for whatever reason, even though you kind of, if you do it enough times, you kind of know, right, well, the reward is there. Still, if you, uh, I mean... I'm signed up to do 30 days of it now, just, just, just to see. That's, that's what I'm saying anyway. I mean, this is not live, so I don't have to. I can just edit this part out and not do 30 days. I yeah. heard you, though. I heard <laughs> But that little voice in us, I think the cold, the more, the more experience of the cold I have, the more I, I believe that the cold represents all those things that we struggle with. So that voice in us that doesn't want to do whatever it is because it's mm. uncomfortable or we're not sure if it'll work or beyond that even, we're fearful or we're worried or you know we're uncertain. It represents all those things to us mm. because like, biologically we react in the same way. We go mm. up into fight or flight when we're worried. We go up into fight or flight when we're in the cold shower. And I think then that as you said, that voice, though the voice of those struggles, the, the feeling of those struggles lessens, becomes less potent every time we get into the cold mm. because we face it. Mm. Even though we're not thinking, oh, I'm worried about this and the cold represents it when I get in. But that sense of, we shouldn't really be that frightened of a cold shower. No. You know, it's, it, there's no, you know, it's not going to kill us, but we approach it as if it is because yeah. it drags up all these things from other parts of us and when we face that down day after day after day after day it becomes like this very important small victory every day mm. and those things become a little bit weakened so this morning i got up early before the children i uh, did my breathing got them off to school did a little bit of work and now here i am you can see here a beautiful sea point that's hoth in the background uh, to do my cold exposure or you know the discomfort of your daily life and don't add the discomfort of a cold shower yeah. in on top of that but somehow it does there is a kind of a transmutation going yeah. on i think the discomfort that we know even if it's something really you know we're suffering from something it's the known thing mm. we do understand it we we know what to expect from it mm. the cold every time is the unexpected mm. it's the great unknown and a lot of for a lot of people that's too much not yeah. the not the temperature of the water but the unknown but really if anything of the last year has shown us we kind of insulate ourselves from the great unknown by pretending our lives can evolve in a way that we can control and we can predict but we can't you know there's yeah. it, there are huge changes going on all the time you know and they come crashing through our lives sometimes if somebody dies or something like that and the cold is like that little bit of unknown every day and the more we get used to accepting it and not fighting it and just learning how to surrender to it and and to learn how to breathe in it and find comfort in it then there's a kind of liberation there as well there's a freedom there if we know that we can deal with so let's say you were going somewhere and something totally unexpected happens and we're like heart rate goes up and we're like, 
if we have done the cold showers, if we've been in there, we know, okay, I can calm my exhale down. I can mm. come back down. I can find a way out of whatever it is. But it's, but it's also, the, but what's really kind of key is it's almost liberation from the idea of it getting better or easier. And I think yeah, that's, that's, that's the fucking, yeah. that, that is why it's, it's, so you go into that cold shower or you go in what into the sea and you're feeling really cocky that day. You know, I, I'm just going to get straight in. I'm well able for this. I'm so used to doing this. That would be the day you get the shock of your <laughs> life because it is, it's nature. So I, I, I love that. That yeah. the, it is, oh, it is the, you, I think you said before about the nature being the teacher, but I like just the humbling, you know, you can try and be a hero when you get into the big sea. Yeah. But you're going to know about it yeah. one way or another. And that's, you know, that's why we always have to respect the we're cold and, and, you know, approach it with respect. It, I mean, we're talking about something that's freely available. It's just, it's just, it's essentially embracing the idea of discomfort and seeing what that discomfort is like yeah. after you've sat, you've sat in it. And, um, and I think that, you know, that's essentially, well, there is a kind of a, also, you, you're talking about this freely available thing, but there is a kind of a communal thing as well. Like I get the impression from people who go together, they've taken this interest and they go out swimming in the sea with yeah. friends. There seems to be a huge routine and ritual yeah. out there now in the last few years since yeah. you started. Is that true? Yeah, seems yeah. To be. It's, it's, you know, it's really exploded, but there is definitely a, a communal feel to the ritual of going mm. to the cold, no matter if it's the sea or the river or whatever it is. And I think part of it is that there's a real sense of togetherness when you come out yeah. it's like sur- you've survived this thing yeah and because even in the old days um, before getting in the sea was, was as popular as it is now which is a very good thing often I'd often go down to sea point or wherever it was and there'd be no one no mm. one around but there might be one person and they might be kind of quiet or whatever and, you know, and they'd get into the sea and they'd come out and they'd be chatting 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 yeah. you know <laughs> big inhales And the known physical benefits of doing something like this, what would you, if you were to rattle off a few of Yeah, so, so first I think the biggest one is it balances out our hormones. Mm. So that can take loads of, you know, that can take loads of forms, but one of them is if we're feeling low or we're not feeling ourselves or, you know, we're feeling under pressure, we get in, hormones balance, we come out, we feel great. Mm. The circulation improves, so... When we're, when we're here now, our blood vessels, we have about 120,000 kilometers worth of blood vessels in the body. And they're kind of, if we stay in a temperature like this, they're, they're generally you know, open in the same way. But when we get into the cold, they constrict. And then they, we get out and they open again. So it's like this amazing workout. So it gets blood and nutrients and oxygen to parts of the body that may not have been getting enough before that. And there's, there's science to show that, you know, when we get in and we can find that we're relaxed in there, the brain stem releases endocannabinoids that makes us feel euphoric and um, it reduces inflammation. So it's kind of like a total reset for, mm. the, for the body physically. Now there's the whole mental resilience part of it as well. We get in and we're learning to deal with that struggle mm. and we get out and we're stronger because of it. So there's layers and layers of benefits to it. But even to keep it very simple, as you said, you go in one way, you get into the cold, you might be feeling a certain way, having a tough day, you get out and you are different. Yeah. And I think that would be the challenge. For, uh, uh, that you, uh, I'd put a bet with uh, X amount of people to go in no matter how you're feeling and then come out, seeking you, do you come out the same way? It's just impossible. It's just impossible. And that's because of all those things we've described, because mm. the body is reacting to the shock of the cold. Mm. Your body is trying to deal with this fight or flight. So we're, you know, it, it, it would be very, very difficult to still be thinking of that thing that you were thinking of getting in. Say if somebody was interested in trying to give this a go um, and uh, trying to give 
the cold. I mean, sorry, the one thing I would say is, you know, you can get into a river close by if you're at, You get into the lake close by, you go and try and find the mountains, if yeah. you the sea, but you have a cold shower or a bath. The easiest is probably a cold shower. But where, how would you recommend for somebody they wanted to try out this breathing and cold shower? Obviously, you have a website and I put your links up and things like that, but... What would you recommend? It's, it's really accessible. So as you described, for some people they live by the sea, you know, try and get into the sea. For mm. some people they can't get to the sea or a lake. If you have a shower, enjoy your hot shower. Turn it to cold for 10, 20 seconds and, and feel that. And trying to, in all these experiences, we're trying to use our exhale, mm. our focus on the exhale to stay calm mm. despite the cold. The inhale will look after itself. But the in, our exhales are taken away. So you're trying to exhale. If a person doesn't want to even do the cold shower, take your shoes and socks off, put your feet on the grass or the cold cement. Even at, at that, you're, you're beginning to feel it. If that doesn't appeal to you, take your jacket off, walk to the shops and back in your jacket or in a pair of shorts. There's, there's, there's loads of ways. There's a way for everyone to do it. Mm. Um, but the thing is just to try it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's as good as any way to start now. But when I heard about it, like I said, I jumped into the shower for, uh, for five minutes and I did it a good few days in a row. In fact, I probably kept going for uh, 30 days, something yeah. like that. And so and when the, when the shock hits, so say whatever it is you've got in the shock and you're, you're, you're trying to catch your breath essentially. Yeah. And you, you almost, some people just blow, uh, but like in that moment in time when the flight, is the flight or fight yeah. reaction, what's, what do you do in that moment in time? So this is what's going to happen. When you get into the culture of this, <gasps> we saw people, we saw people in, down in the sea today and you can yeah. hear them from a mile away. Oh, I was one of those, yeah. yeah. So in, in that moment, what's happened is the body has released a huge amount of adrenaline and energy to deal with the perceived danger of the cold. Mm. Heart rate goes flying up. You could nearly jump out of the sea if you, kinda, if you were so inclined. So we're, what we're trying to do is, so the, the, the body is putting the accelerator down. Mm. So what we're trying to do is, we're just trying to take the foot off the accelerator. Mm. so when we're like this <gasps> you're trying to <sighs> get your elongated exhales going and after about four or five of these long exhales the vagus nerve starts to activate a little more your heart rate begins to slow down your body begins to feel safe even though it still feels cold but you start to shift from being danger danger this is an emergency situation to being okay now i'm in control so it's it's that long exhale and so practice mm. you know w when people get into the cold shower first they may not be able to find the exhale even because they'll be like, ah, ah, ah. Mm. but it's trying to in your mind find your exhale and then just make it a bit longer mm. and then just kind of focus on those long breaths. don't worry the inhale will happen mm. focus on those long breaths and you'll feel a shift so in the workshops, when I have the privilege of guiding people into the ice bath, and I've seen it thousands of times before, they get in, full fight or flight, eyes, <laughs> they're breathing, they're slowly trying to find the exhale, and you can see four or five long, you can see the switch, it goes, yeah. the body starts to feel safe, and you can actually feel, you can see their body going from this, to this, and then, then their mind is in you know then they're in control again mm. and that's very empowering for people yeah because they step out of the ice then or the or the shower or whatever it is and they think to themselves god i could find i could find a sense of peace in that you know mm. and then what happens if you can find a sense of peace no matter what the pressure mm. yeah that's that's the real value of it yeah, I like, um, I, and I think it's done almost. Once you can get that breath where it's relaxed, you're done. You can get out like, you've done your, you've done your bit. You don't need to stay in anymore, I don't think. You can if you want to, but you really, if you can, you've, you've, if you've moved from that to the... You've got it. 
well, it's done. You, you've got the benefit. Yeah. When you get out, you've already got... Is that true? That would be my sense of it. You've yeah, more or less got the benefit there. The cold, the cold is more... Less is more with the cold. Mm, okay. So, especially if we're living a, a busy life, we don't need to spend five minutes in the cold. Yeah. You can do it <laughs> as an experiment, absolutely. Mm. But as you said, when you get in, you feel the shock, the mind, the senses fragments, and you use the breath to calm yourself down. Letting go as you exhale. Fully in. Letting go. Big inhales. In a way, this became, and, I, and I've seen it happen to loads of people, where it started off by something they were just going to give a go to, to... They drag loads of other people. You've obviously started a business around it, but you know it—it's the seed of something that became something totally different. Yeah. And who would have thought that? And I, I do often think back to that night in the kitchen, just by chance or whatever you want to call it, turn on the podcast, and there was Wim Hof talking, mm. and how that listening to that conversation has transformed my life, Josie's life, the life of our whole family, everything from just that one little moment. Mm. And what I take from it is that now I try to be more open to what's going on mm. because we never know when a moment like that will come or it probably happen all the time. Mm. But if, if I'm distracted or not paying attention or not open, if I'm narrow-minded or whatever it is, we kind of miss them. Yeah. You know, so what I learned from that moment was that just to be a little bit more open and to, to be flexible to see what happens. Yeah, well, in fairness, like, really, who would have thought a cold shower? You know, who would have thought, uh, like, really, is the last thing that you didn't think you did? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I think it's lovely. So, Daddy, um, do, you have, um, do you have any starter breathing videos that you've done on YouTube? Do you have uh, a few of those? That yes, you so we have... 10 days of breathing, which okay. is a great way for people to start. So it's, um, we kind of challenge people to take just 10 minutes a day to, for ten, ten, 10 days in a row. And the, if you go to the homepage of my website, breathewithniall.com, it's right there. Yeah, and it's, it's me guiding everyone through just 10 minutes for 10 days. Yeah, okay, lovely. It's, it's, a really, it's a really easy way to start, it's free, it's only 10 minutes. And it's just trying to get people into the routine of, of doing a little bit of conscious breathing during the day. I, I mean, if you get in, if you do 10 minutes of breathing and get into a cold shower, the, you will, uh, it's not like you're looking around going, what's the big deal? You, you've actually got a benefit. Like I used to try loads of different types of meditation and you, because you hear suggestions about Oh, you want to see bright lights and whatever. You're kind of waiting for the. You're waiting for the big thing. This is so down to earth, really. That's why I love it. It is. Bye, Frankie. Frank. Frank. Frank, come on, man. <laughs>